Right. Still, we know here at The Scathing Atheist that even non-bigoted, non-assholes can be confused about trans athletes and fairness in sports. So, in the spirit of education, let's answer some FAQs with another episode of Kicking It with Carl. He's a pug and he's also a unicorn. You know, that's a horse that has a horn. But don't forget, he's a pegasus too. That's called a pug, a peg of corn, and he likes you. It's Kicking It with Carl. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Kicking It with Carl. My guest today is podcaster and activist, Callie Wright. Callie, welcome to Kicking It with Carl. Hey, Carl. Thanks for having me on. So, Callie, I asked you on the program today so we could talk about trans athletes in sports. I am one of those. So, like me? Exactly. You play roller derby, right? I sure do. Now, Callie, isn't that unfair? Uh, how so? Okay. Well, so, you know, among Pugapegacorns, pug at least, there's, like, like dude Pugapegacorns are, are usually, um, usually... Bigger, bigger and stronger? Yeah, usually. It's, is that true with humans, too? I mean, most of the time, but there's a pretty wide range within that category. Oh, yeah, I, I guess there is. But, like... What if a dude Pugapegacorn was just like, I'm a lady Pugapegacorn, and then wanted to play in the Pugap Olympics? Wouldn't that be unfair? I'm glad you asked, Carl. And yes, if you could just announce your gender and instantly change categories, maybe that might be unfair. Except that's not actually how trans athletics work, at least not in most cases. It's not? No, for almost all gender segregated sports, athletes have to have been on hormones for a period of time and sometimes even uh, have to have had surgery before they're allowed to compete as a gender other than the one they were assigned at birth. The, the Olympics even has an official policy about it. Wait a second, they do? They sure do. Okay, but aren't their bones and muscles and stuff denser or something? Actually, not necessarily. There's there's quite a bit of peer-reviewed research that shows after trans athletes are on hormones for a significant amount of time, they have the same or less bone and muscle density as the cis people in their category. So trans athletes don't have a significant biological advantage. Not according to the science we have, no. But more importantly, even if they did have a biological advantage, it might not be as unfair as you think. What do you mean? Well, did you know that Michael Phelps has double-jointed ankles? Uh, he does? He does. Plus, he produces almost half the lactic acid of other athletes. Wow, he's so lucky. He is lucky, Carl, and that's actually kind of my point. When someone like Michael Phelps is born with physical advantages, we talk about how lucky they are. It's all well and good to say trans women are women, but if that stops when we want to play sports, you're kind of secretly saying you actually don't think they are. Oh, I, I didn't mean it that way. I know you didn't, Carl, and it's always okay to ask questions, but... It's pretty tough to be trans right now. There's bathroom bills, the trans military ban, and the government rolling back our health care and legal protections. So you just, you just got to be extra careful, okay? Okay. And if someone tells me I hurt their feelings, I should apologize? That is right, Carl. All right, Kelly. One more question for you. And this is a tough one. All right, shoot. Do you like garlic bread? You know I do. All right. Well, Kelly, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, Carl. He's a pug and he's also a unicorn. You know, the horse that has a horn. But don't forget, he's a pegasus too. That's called a pug, a pegacorn, and he likes you. He's kicking it with Carl. Thank you, Kelly and Carl.